Hi everybody and welcome back to another How To Draw With Me Saskia aka Sassy Colouring. The small image that we're going to draw today is something that I was asked to simplify and redraw. For somebody who wanted to get a, a theme going through their bullet journal for June or July and their theme was lemons and fresh. So this is a really simple way to draw something that could be used um, shrunken down in a bullet journal or just as a really cute illustration somewhere. So to start off let's draw a rectangle. We're going to draw this image nice and big in the centre of our page but just remember that you can draw it any size, just size it up or size it down. We're going to section off a small bit at the top so we've got a large rectangle and a small rectangle. Then I'm going to draw a circle just to map out where I want the elements of my page to be. And on the right hand side, I'm going to draw a semicircle. These are going to be the lemons, but it's also handy to know where kind of the bottom of the page will be. And this will help with the composition kind of making sure that things are relatively the right size before you go in and draw a lot of detail into something and then realize it's not in proportion to the rest of your image. So I always draw in a very cartoony kind of whimsical style. So if you're looking for kind of realism, then the best thing to do would be to kind of set up an image or find an image of what you're looking for and kind of work off that as a reference. But for now, we're going to round off the top corners of the rectangle. So we'll call it the lower rectangle. We're going to split the top rectangle in half and we're going to round off the edges. And this will be the top of our mason jar. Now, please keep in mind that my pencil lines are a lot heavier than what yours should be. I'm drawing them quite thick and quite dark so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, which will cause problems when I try to erase them when I go on to do the line art. But if you keep your lines nice and soft and very light, it, it'll work much better when you go to erase them or you line over them. Okay, so our first circle is a lemon. And what we're going to do is we're going to case the circle in a rectangle. And if you've seen the other video on how to draw a leaf, what we do is we split the rectangle into two. We're going to put two small semicircles or like a C and a backward C either side, halfway up the rectangle. And then we're going to join them arcing over our circle. So that sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. All you're doing is using the circle in the middle, the edges of the rectangle to make an almost eye shape. The reason that we use the rectangle is that sometimes it can be hard to eyeball the shape of a lemon. So what we do is we give ourselves kind of a structure being the circle and the rectangle and that's how we create a lemon that you can replicate then to look the same kind of over and over. With the semicircle, I've just drawn another line mimicking the outside line, a small semicircle in the middle and some lines coming off it like sun rays. And voila, you have a segment of lemon. We're going to add two leaves coming off the bigger lemon, one line straight down the middle of each. And then if you want to, you can add in some details into the lemon. Again, it makes it look very cartoony, but these kind of large circles give you the idea more so that it's a lemon. We're moving back to our mason jar and we're just going to draw a line where we want the liquid to be in the mason jar. A few circles are going to make our bubbles so that it looks like a nice bubbly drink. Vary the size of your circles to make the bubbles look a bit more interesting. Then some small accents of small circles inside the bubbles just gives them a bit more depth. Now we're just hitting five minutes, so you could leave your drawing at this stage and it would be fine. 
but as you can see a few simple lines on the, the lid of the mason jar will make it that little bit more interesting to look at. Small accents here and there can really make a difference and take it from a very simple sketch to something that you're really proud of. Looking at this I think that it needs something extra so what I'm going to do is just use a ruler and put in a straw. Now of course you don't have to use a ruler, you can freehand it, but I do when there's something like a straw and there's a long straight line, I kind of prefer to use the ruler because otherwise it can look really squiffy and really disorientate the picture. So just two straight lines parallel to each other, rounded on the top and on the bottom, and then a few horizontal lines across them and you've got yourself a lovely straw. Again, as this isn't a realism drawing, we're not going to kind of distort the straw under the liquid. So it's fine just to kind of use a bit of artistic license on what should be happening in this picture. A few lines down each side just gives a more 3D look to the jar. And that's your pencil sketch finished. So this is where we need our fine liners. What I prefer to do is use two or three different sizes. So I'm gonna go in with a thick 1.0 to do the outer lines, and then the details in smaller, maybe a 0.5 or a 0.2, that kind of thickness. My number one tip for outlining your drawing would be confidence, confidence, confidence. The slower you take a line, the more chance there is of that line going wrong. I'm not saying if you do it too fast that it's going to be perfect, but just remember that if you have the confidence to start and finish a line in one kind of swoop, you've got a much better chance of the line being what you want it to be. Some of the problems you might encounter as a beginner, and me again, from going back from digital to uh, traditional art, I found that sometimes my lines are not ending where I want them to, but you can always hide that, either when you're colouring, or just make something um, join up with another line or hide it somehow. But just remember that these are just common things that practice will get rid of. The more you practice, the more you understand your um, your pens, which might sound silly, but you get used to the certain pen that you're using, uh, or pencil, or whatever, paint, or whatever you're using. You do get to know them, and then you can understand better how to work with them. Once you've outlined your drawing, you can also then have a look to see if you can fit any more elements in. Does your picture look finished? Does it look like it needs something else? That's where you can start adding things in. I personally still go back in with pencil. So when I finish the outline, I go back in with pencil and try a few more things if I think it needs it. So that um, I still have the choice to kind of erase them if I don't want them. When it's something like the leaves where I know that I want to have lines coming from the center of the leaf to the outside, then I might use my pen straight away but more often than not it's safer to use the pencil so that you know what you're drawing looks right or not. So I used the ruler when I did the pencil version of the straw but again to fit it in with the cartoony style I didn't want anything too angular because I have the pencil lines to follow now I'm going to freehand over the top of them so that it doesn't look too straight. So if you were going to use an illustration like this in your journal um, and use it as maybe a monthly cover what you could do is then take the lemon with the two leaves and use that on your weekly spread or the half a lemon or segment and use that somewhere else to decorate. When you're doing your kind of themed month, take elements out of the image that you've drawn and use them through the rest of your month. A straw here, a few bubbles there, and it'll really bring the whole month together for you. So that's our line art almost finished. 
Now I've used three different fine liners, um, a pencil, I will use my eraser to get rid of the pencil lines and a ruler and just generic copy paper. So you don't have to have special equipment to learn to draw, all you have to do is want to learn. If you draw this once and the lemons don't look right, draw it again and very soon you'll start to recognise where you're going wrong in your illustrations. If you draw a lemon and it's not quite right, then you'll know where to correct yourself. It's all trial, error and practice. I'm going to speed the video up now while I colour in and it's a very, very, again, simple colouring just to show you what it could look like when it's finished. I hope you enjoy the colouring and I'll speak to you in a moment. So that's our illustration finished, all drawn, sketched, lined and coloured. This is a simple illustration, but I don't want you to confuse that with a easy to draw illustration. Because depending on where you are in your drawing journey, if this is the first time you've picked up a pencil, it's going to obviously be a lot harder to draw something than if you've been drawing for two weeks, two months, two years. Give yourself time to learn. Remember that you're always going to be your own worst critic. Give yourself some encouragement by appreciating what you draw when you finish. If you're not happy with the illustration, then kind of learn from it. Ask yourself, why am I not happy with this illustration? What have I done that I don't like? and then learn from that in the next time you're going to draw it. Too often I see people go on to an easy tutorial to draw something and when theirs doesn't come out like the person on the videos does, they get very discouraged. That's the last thing you should do. Just remember that while this took me say 15 minutes to do, you could spend an hour on it. There will also be people who spend five minutes and theirs comes out ten times better than mine. That's awesome. It's all about appreciating not only your own work, but other people's work. Encouraging yourself and championing other people. We want to be appreciative of our own skills and talents and also supportive of other people's. That's the best thing that our community does. If you've got um, a group that you're in on Facebook, make sure you support other people because you never know when that kind word that you say will be returned when you need it the most. That's it for me. I hope this has been useful in some way. If not, I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Until next time, stay safe, stay happy, and as always, stay sassy.